Hey guys, Dave is here. So today we're going to actually be going through the learning of how to get started in Godot. So if you got redirected from um from the video on Visual Scripts, you're in the right place. And if when you're done with this video, you can just go over there and continue that. Okay. So what we're gonna start by doing is we're gonna start by downloading the software that you need, which is called Godot. So don't be scared, Godot isn't a large, it's not a large software, it's about like I think 30 MB or so. So not so large and it won't take so much time. So what we're going to do, um, we're going to start by typing in Godot. And note that Godot is a free and open source, meaning that it is free for everyone. And just do that by typing godotengine.org, as you can see on my um, laptop already typed it. In. So we're gonna hit enter on that and make sure you're connected to an internet connection file obviously. So what we're gonna do now is we're in the site. Um, this is what you see as at okay yeah as at June 2020. Um yep yeah, um June to July actually. Then we're gonna hit download. Okay, this download tab up here. You're gonna hit it. Then from here you're gonna see where you can actually download the book. So what you're gonna do now is you're going to check if your laptop is a 64 bits or a 32 bits um or a 32 bits laptop. Okay, so mine is a 64 bit. So I'm gonna hit 64 bit. Well, here you can see standard version and you see this mono version C sharp support. Um, if you don't know how to code in C sharp and I don't think I'll be covering that in this channel. So you can just go ahead to um, GD Quest or somewhere like Kit Control, I think, maybe. Um, they will might cover that. Okay, so here again, you're gonna check for the OS here. So this is for Linux. You can just type that, tap that, and you see the standard version for Linux. Um, but I'm using Windows anyway. So I'm gonna hit 64 bit because my laptop is a 64 bit. So when I tap that, it's going to start downloading. Okay, no, not yet. It will ask you for where you want to save this file. So, um, assume you want to save it in your desktop. So I just click desktop there, and if I click save, it starts downloading. I already have Godot, so I'm not gonna download it. And when you download Godot, um, it's going to download as a zip file. So you're just gonna extract that. And just open it up. It doesn't have any installation process or anything. So I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go ahead and open Godot right now. So I've opened Godot, and this is what you're gonna see as far as, anyways. Um, there'll be nothing here. So don't mind mine. Um, yep, there'll be nothing here. Okay, so this is it will actually be empty and know that you can turn off your internet access right now. Like it's free. You don't you don't need to put on your internet for this. So what we're gonna start by doing is you you see new project, we're gonna tap on new project and we're going to say um uh, we're gonna name this project to be like um game. Okay, game one maybe. <laughs> And here you're gonna see browse, and this is where you wanna save that um, game that you want, the, the project that you want. So you can just navigate by going to the desktop, going to anywhere actually that you wanna save this. But I have a folder that I like saving all this stuff, so I can just hit create folder and type in whatever I want. But a faster way to do that is by going here and see create folder. So it's just gonna create a folder for you. And everything will be nice. So I'm using OpenGL ES 3.0, and as you can see, it has a higher visual quality. Well, you can use this one if your laptop is a bit slower and all that stuff. So I'm gonna hit create and edit, and Godot finally opens. Yep, so at the start, this is what you're gonna see, and you can actually play around with this. This is the 3D view because Godot is a is an engine that you can use to code um, 2D and 3D games. So this is the 3D view is gonna open first. And if you want to navigate around this, you can just if you're using a mouse, you can use the middle mouse button and just um, navigate. 
and you use the right click to look around and all that stuff but we're not going to be dealing with 3d yet so what we're going to start with is 2d and over here at the top you see 2d so we're going to click that so um if you want to actually go to 2d um really quickly you can just tap f1 and it just switches the scenes there sorry it just switches the um views there okay so now the basic keys you want to know is this um, ones here at the top because you'll actually it will be more convenient for you which is the f1 the f2 and the f3 so the f1 takes you to the 2d f2 3d f3 script well the f4 um is the asset library but you're not going to be using that quite often so what we're going to be starting by doing is we're going to hit to the scene so as you can see here they say create root node and before i hit that to the scene i just want to explain um the interface for you so this is the node tree this is where um you'll see everything um about your game like all the nodes you're going to be using because this is a node system that we're going to be using so um here you say create root node and once you create a root node this is the root node of a scene the scene can have more than one root node so this is going to be the root node for our game and if you want to rename this you can just double click it and be like um game okay and let's say this is our game scene now we can hit Control s to save it you can create a new folder like um create a new folder and call it like scene yep i hit okay and here you see it scene there so you can save this guy and you can you can literally save it even even you can even save it here but i'm gonna save it here and scenes okay so i'm gonna save that there um and also another thing you can do is this if you didn't know this um file of this project is actually in your file manager so you can just go on and hit and click on right click on any of them and go to see in file manager and you're gonna see and if you open this scenes folder you're gonna see the scene that we created which is has an extension of the tscn okay so we're gonna go into the basics of gd scripting so what how we're gonna do that is we're gonna hit this plus script icon there and here you see the path where we want to save it okay so we're not gonna save any in the scene and i don't want to create another script folder because this is literally the only script we'll have i'm just gonna hit open i'm gonna open it there and here you see inherit and this node 2d is actually created if you if I create another scene by hitting that plus, you see 2D scene, and when I hit 2D scene, you're gonna see node 2D. So that's the name of this node. Okay, so that, that, that's nice stuff you wanna know. And we're gonna just create a scene and we're gonna save it in our normal folder. Again, we're gonna create a script. Term. Then here you see language, we're gonna use GD script, but if you are directed from Visual Script, um from the Visual Script video. You're in the right place we're going to be using visual script in that video but you need to know the basics okay so here we see template you see um default but i want to just tap on no comment so that you will follow along really nicely so i'm going to hit create when you hit create um the scripts the script um script part tab here will open up and you're going to see your scripts so um, I'm gonna start with the basics, and the first thing we're gonna start with is the variable. So variable and how we make variables in Godot. If you're not, if you're familiar with other systems like um, the Python, and um, yeah, Godot GD script actually be easy for you, and I advise you to follow that path. But if you're not and you just wanna watch this video for the sake of the basics, well, just follow along close. So. It, by making a variable we have to type in var okay and var um and after we type in var we can type in anything that we want so now it's time to name the variable and let's say we can just name it um grid okay so this variable called grid is we actually made this variable so first line of code 
that you've ever written in your life? Maybe. I'm just saying. Yeah, is this. So, written um, a line of code and what's a variable? Actually, a variable is a container that contains different data types. You can store different sorts, different data types in variables. Okay. So, here we have grid and this grid, since we have not set it to anything, by default is equal to null. And what is null? Null is null. Like, null is nothing. Basically, it's not a zero, but it's just nothing. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna I'm gonna show you the different data types that Godot has. So it has something we call an array. Okay, so an array is like a list of um a list of data types. Okay, I I don't know, I don't really know how to explain that so you understand it. Like for example, if we have um an integer here one and we have a float so a float is an integer is um a whole number as most of you know but a float is like a decimal number like for example we have 3.5 3.5 is not an integer but it's a float so we can have 3.5 and any number behind it all of them are called floats um and we can just say like a 0 0.43 that's a float and the other data type that you that I'm gonna tell you is called strings so the strings are anything that are covered in quotes for example we can have um, hello so that's a real great thing like hello that's a string and this string is and you can literally put in anything in here but things like numbers, you can't actually add letters to it. That, that, that's just weird. They, they even give you an error. So, yeah. Um, for strings, you can put in numbers. You can put in numbers and letters. You can just put in anything you want in strings. Strings are just very dynamic. So, we're going to leave it at hello. And we're going to put an exclamation sign on there. Okay. So, the other data type I want to show you is the... Dictionary, but I don't think we'll cover dictionaries in this particular tutorial. Okay, and yeah, there are, there are, there are different data types. There is a data type that is called a vector two. So we can say var, let's say, and it's mostly used in movements. Okay, so say so move equals to a vector two. So as you can see here, it goes in green, and if we, we're just going to open and close the bracket there, just to get rid of that error. So if you're in the middle of the bracket, you're gonna see vector two x float y float, meaning we should pass in a float value into that. Okay, so we can pass in an x value like twelve or one to three, and pass in a y value of like um, forty five, and that 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 is like a coordinate system. Um, that's what vector twos are, like a graph system or something. So we're going to be using this a lot when it comes to the player movement because the graph of Godot is actually um, kind of weird. It's like most game engines out there actually. So if you're moving in the plus, um, this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. Okay, the vertical one is y and the horizontal is x. Um, if you've gone through uh, middle school, I think you should know that. Yeah, so at the right, um, if you're moving right, for example, as you can see my node here, my node 2D, you can see that point in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in this guy over here and I'm going to leave it. So when I leave it, you're going to see add sprite, add light 2D, add all these things. But we want to make it a sprite, so we're going to leave it as sprite. Well, if it doesn't show you that thing or and it just... It just, it just it just dropped there there's no problem with that it's okay so um here in the node 2d i want to just show you how godot works so the parent node the the child node of every parent yeah always follows the parent just like the mama duck and the baby ducks they always follow the parent they always follow the uh, mama duck so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just try to move this parent. Um, this is a child actually. So we're gonna try to move this parent node by going to the transform here. And where you see position, I um, want to move it on the x-axis. 
so um the x-axis um this is the plus x-axis so we're gonna add a value to this zero so for example we add like a 10 to this zero you see that it actually moves and it moves with the um with the child okay wait let's just try this with a larger number like 100 so that you see what i mean and you see that it moves again with the child so that's nice stuff and it's moving in the x axis in the plus x axis because this is actually a plus number so imagine if we move this in the minus okay so yep you guessed it right it's going to move in this direction down there okay so see it moves actually to this point because it's moving in the minus so i'm going to just try for y but um the y axis is kind of tricky because it's not the same as the one you know the y axis actually on a normal from basic graph rules the y axis the top y axis is the plus and the down y axis is the minus but in Godot it's not so and actually in most game engines it's not so so if we try to move um let's say 100 pixels down okay on the y axis you're gonna see that it moves down but it's meant to move up because the up is a plus axis um according to uh, standard graph rules but it's not so so it's gonna move down if we put a hundred here and it's gonna put move um up if we put a minus hundred so that's the nice thing you want to know about the graph of Godot and also you can click this return button to return you back to the middle so um another thing I want to show you is how the child moves without the parents so the child node can move without the parent but the parent node can't move sorry where is it I'm gonna just click this move tool here so the body parent mode can move without the child so if you notice the child is moving with the parent but the parent is not moving with the child so that's nice stuff um you want to know and yeah if you want to go back to your cursor um, you can just select this or you can hit q and w to just switch between those guys um nicely yeah so it that would be actually important so we'll go back to our coding aspect and there's actually more types um you can have a move vector three move equal to sorry move two because yeah because it's vector three and this actually allows you to input three values so that's nice stuff um the thing is that you can't make two variables that have the same name that that's not possible in Godot. So now the next thing I want to show you a function. So I'm going to show you the only two functions um, that are very basic, and I'm going to show you how to make functions. So this is the first function. As you can see, it came here um, when we created the script by default. So the ready function, what it does is that it runs whatever happens in the game once. Okay. It runs it only once and it runs it at the start of the game. So um, it's going to run whatever is going to be in here. For example, we can say blah 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 blah. So it's going to run all this stuff one time and it's going to run it at the start of the game. So that's that that's actually very essential and it's going to in some cases where you just um, where you can start where you go farther you know, that you start knowing how to instance all these um, instance some scenes and all that stuff you 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 really get what i mean so here we can just run the game scene now and the only thing you see is this guy and what you you'll never see him full you're gonna see only this part and that's because he's um at this part of this is actually the this is the screen that you're gonna see so if you put him somewhere here you're gonna see him nice so if you want to run your scene, we're going to use this run scene button here. Not that play button, I'm going to tell you what that is for in a second. So um, here is our guy, we, we can't control him, we can't do anything, we haven't even given him a code or anything, he's just a sprite there. Okay, so we're not actually going to be giving him anything for this tutorial. Okay, so um, I've shown you um, how moves work, and I want to show you again how... Um, what signals are 
so as you can see here this node if you click on this node and go to node you're gonna see different signals that can be emitted okay and many other um, sprites or many other children or many other types of nodes have different signals so if you go in depth of all these things you you really know what the signals are for and they are really very important so we can have something like an area to the um, I'm going to show you how much signals this guy has. You see that he has many more signals than these other guys. So I'm just going to delete them. Yeah. So that's what you know for signals. And let's go back to the functions. So the functions, um, I'm going to make another func function by just typing func. And it's going to be the physics process function. So I'm going to just type in pass here for now. So what does the physics fun process function do? It actually it's the same with the process function i have not still seen the difference till now i don't see a difference between the two of them so as i'm explaining one i'm basically explaining the other so now this is where frames come in we um what the physics pro process function does is it whatever is in here okay whatever is in the code is going to be run 60 times in one second and note that a function can't be inside a function. Like um, we can't have something like this. Uh, yeah, that that's impossible. We can't have that. So just note that, but we can call functions when we need them. So the physics process function runs whatever is in here 60 times in one second, and it runs it every time in the game, like every single time in the game until the game ends, until you quit the game, it continues running. So we need that most likely in our games. And yeah, so I'm done with the physics process and the process functions. I'm just going to show you one more thing. And that is going to be how to make function. So we're going to just type in func. And we just type in whatever we want to call this function. Put it, um, put a bracket after it and put a colon. And boom, we've made a function. So that's, uh, that's, that's a... Um, user made function we just made it and as I said before you can call functions by you, you can just say G S H um, and you yeah, auto complete it there for you and you just call the function so here on the ready whatever is inside this function will be called um, here okay in the ready so that's nice stuff you want to do if you like want to group your code and something like that then one last thing um, sorry I won't say last thing again um, one more thing I want to do is I want to show you how to import um, sprites or images to this game because you're going to be needing that a lot because nothing, literally nothing in your game is going to work without sprites okay, without sprites in it so we're going to actually import um, a square, a just a simple square and how are we going to do that, this square here so how are we going to do that it's pretty easy. Just grab it, drag it, and drop it here in your file manager. Okay, just drop it there, and it automatically imports it. So now we can drag it and put over here beside our Godot logo, and just run it and show you. Um, actually, I run it with F6. That's a shortcut, and you can see that we have our box here. So this plus button, I want to just tell you what it's for. This is for running, um, like if you want your game to always start at this scene or at any scene, you're gonna tap this and you're gonna click select. And we're gonna choose the scene that we want our game to run at every start. For example, if you like publish a game or something, and maybe you have a load screen, and yeah, and maybe you have a load screen, you will most likely want to set that. As your main scene, as I, as I showed here, pick a main scene. But you can always change this, so don't be scared. You can always change this. Go to the project, project setting, application. Um, you go to run, and you can also change the main scene there. So don't be scared. You can actually change it. Yeah. So this is the game, and nothing, nothing really fun happening here. Um, I think this should be all for this tutorial. Um, hope you enjoyed it and if you are for the visual script video just go on there now and just check it out and you'll know 
you will know many things now okay so if you have any questions you can leave it down in the comment section below or you can go on my discord and hit me up on facebook instagram twitter or anywhere and i'm gonna help you out from there thank you for watching and goodbye also please don't forget to leave a like down on this video if you like it if you don't like it dislike it well all i have to say is goodbye thank you